Joe, you know, sometimes in talking to you, I've, I've been with you once or twice now, and I think you have to... You better explain you've been with me on the air. On the air, yeah. uh, on your television. <laughs> on your television show, and I think sometimes you have to work awfully hard to find something to complain about. Let here. me give you... Let, just to show you I'm not nitpicking with this lady, listen to some advice she gives in this book, Outrageous Opinions. He's talking now to a lonesome female. I don't know whether I can, well, I'll try. She says, one way to spend a Saturday night alone is to put on some records, jazz, classical, or cha-cha-cha, pull down the shades, and dance naked for a couple of hours. What is so outrageous about that? Helen, they're gonna send you to the funny farm. Helen has a mind like a steel trap and a will of iron. She is one of the very few originals. She's incredible. I was 10 years old when my father was crushed in the elevator in the Little Rock State Capitol building. 10 years old. My sister managed to get polio and I had to start working real fast. She spent a lot of time as a secretary when she was really a very talented copywriter. With those 17 secretarial jobs, I mean that's, you have to be resilient, you have to really be a tough girl. She was very clear about what it was that she wanted to be and it wasn't going to be easy and it wasn't going to be handed to her. The men copywriters hated me. They even talked about me to Don Belding. They said, this little creep, we have a family, we have children. She's sitting down here at the office at 8 o'clock at night because she doesn't have anybody and she's making us look bad. I heard that David Brown was getting a divorce and I said to one of my friends who knew his wife, I said, I'd like to meet him. She took every last cent she had, every nickel she had, and she went out and she bought a Mercedes for herself because she thought that it would be appealing and sexy to him to say, hmm, who is this chick with a Mercedes? He said, that's a nice car. I said, I know, and I paid cash for that car. He said he never knew a woman who paid cash for a car to bobby pins, let, <laughs> let alone an automobile, let alone a Mercedes Benz. The French call it a coup de foudre. You know, you, you see somebody, and that's it. And that was it for me. I suggested that she write a book about her life as a single woman, because she described it to me very often. And uh, it seemed to me a good idea. Nobody had ever really seen a book like Sex and the Single Girl. At that point in time, this was the 60s, women were just really getting a little bit of sense that they could have this freedom and that they could have the life they wanted. The book was a pretty big bestseller. After I was on the Today Show, I got just dozens of letters. They're all over the place. I'm typing and answering everybody. He said, Helen, if you had a magazine, you could answer everybody at one time. And we didn't know any better. We just sat down at the kitchen sink and, and uh, did up a format for a magazine for young women. I had been working at Cosmopolitan, I don't know, about a year maybe. And uh, it was a very different magazine. Since it was about to die, Dick Deems, who was then the head of the magazine company, sort of uh, said, okay, this, we're gonna close it. And let's see if it works. I don't know what we, we, how we pushed her into this thing. But we got her into Hearst and we got her into the into Cosmo. It was successful immediately. But she was an editor, you know, a na natural born editor. Her ability to dissect stories too long, too short, do this, do that. That was her talent. Cosmo immediately 
flew off the newsstand, had a 100% sell through, and we were profitable from day one. Cosmo Girl is a young woman between the ages of 18 and 34 who is traditional in many ways. She loves men, she loves children, but she doesn't want to live through other people she wants to achieve on her own. What a groundbreaking magazine she put together in 1965. I think that what she did was to create a DNA of the magazine, which was inspiring and aspirational and fun and full of information and full of service, saying to this young woman, just, you know, set your eyes up there, you know, put your sights high. Helen has taught me editing is about good sense. And she would always say that you have to go with your gut. And if it makes sense, if it makes good sense, then go with it. I always believed that she had a, an individual person in mind when she edited. She wasn't editing to a class of people or to a group of people or to all 23 years old. She had a singular young woman in mind. She thought that everybody, women, should have it all. Helen has had an effect on the whole society, I believe. Most people don't recognize that Helen Brown is a feminist that she has always fought for the empowerment of women to decide what they do in their life and what kind of life they will lead. Women have come now to where Helen thought they should have been 20 years ago. You can be strong, you can be smart, and you can wear your blouse button opened just a little bit lower than everybody else. She opened up doors for us. I mean, I was a woman that, that came through doors thanks to Helen Gurley Brown because she made people understand that women had tremendous determination, tremendous ambition, and we would work our tushes off. And that's what Helen did. She gets to go down along with uh, all the chief executives and the founder uh, as among the most important people in the history of this company. Times change with Cousin Fulton has helped them do that. <laughs> She's not a predictable yeah, I person. I better when I'm smiling. She's very different every day. Oh and she always <laughs> surprises me with what she does. Helen is a pure inspiration for me. She makes you feel good about yourself. She doesn't make you feel bad about yourself. I think she's, you know, the steel hand in the velvet glove. That uniqueness, that ability, that willingness to be only herself and not what somebody else created will be what all of us who knew her remember. What's she, what's she really like? She's like Helen. <laughs>